Hi, I'm Tracy Oppenheimer for Reason TV, and we're here at Maker Fair in San Mateo, California, right outside San Francisco, looking at the maker movement, how it's really evolved in recent years, and why it's enabling a much more individualized society. A maker is someone who takes their skill or their hobby, their passion, and extends it into actually creating things. Traditionally, the maker movement started as you know non-electronics. Um, there's more and more people getting involved um, in using electronics uh, to make art, um, to make uh, products that can eventually actually be launched. It's very satisfying to come up with something that you're passionate about using your skills to create what, what, whatever it is and not be bound by requirements of a customer or someone else's demands. You can't ignore the DIY thing because a good idea can scale up to full production in a year. I have a Rubik's Cube solving robot which can solve a Rubik's Cube in any orientation in any um, scramble. It's my uh, injection molding machine that I made. It took three years and I made everything about this, from the uh, machining, the welding, the design, like literally everything, every part on this was made with my hands. I consider myself a maker because I like creating things and constantly every day I think of an idea or something to make and I think making is fun. So when you think making is fun and you think of ideas all the time, that kind of considers you as a maker. I've always been a tinker. Um, I've always, you know, pulled stuff apart, um, repurpose it, um, redo it and make it better. It was just really exciting to see this thing that started out as an idea in my head, uh, it, it went to a design in CAD and then it came out as a real thing. And so it just, it's just, uh, you know, it's just sort of a sense of accomplishment and just being able to say that you did something, uh, you know, 100% yourself. I think that making technology more accessible allows not only these expression of ideas, which is, you know, it's the lofty goal of the maker movement, but a lot of these makers or DIYers are trying to do something that perhaps someone like myself in the industry has become too jaded. The nice thing about um, these uh, platforms and their customizability um, is it becomes really uh, easy to wrap a prototype um, with hardware. Arduino has allowed people to take a microcontroller and do complex things without actually knowing how to use a microcontroller. There's just more people who have the idea and will actually do it. You know, because there's so many tools between 3D printing and a lot of like the mills and electronics and uh, Arduinos, it's just so much more accessible. Like before there was such a barrier to learning how to do stuff. Uh, projects like uh, Kickstarter uh, have enabled uh, makers to actually become uh, manufacturers. Prior to, you know, the rapid prototyping uh, platforms, um, it wasn't really possible to go from a maker to a manufacturer. Um, because you needed to know um, the vendors that actually provided the stuff. Um, it was very hard um, to actually get a product made. Um, that has become really, really easy. You can do it at every level. I mean, there, that's the cool thing about this place. There's so many projects from just little fabric electronics to smaller robotics that like, it, no matter what your skill level is, there's something that you can do. I think it's gotten a lot more popular. When I was really little, when, um, when I was like five years old, uh, way less people. <laughs> Not like 150,000 like there is this year. Almost exponentially is a term that's maybe overrated, but I've been coming to the Maker Fair since it started in the Bay Area, and just the size has expanded. One of the other things as I visit um, Maker, Maker Spaces, is the sense of community among it's it's a really birds of a feather and it, it it's is kind of infectious.